All right, we're back here. We're around three for Lord of the Rings League. We got our finals here. We got Raphael with his very powerful Abzan Legends uh, deck here against uh, Sawyer. So we've been following Raphael since the start. Uh, he's won both of his rounds. And now he's up against Sawyer, who has uh, been here before. He's uh, he's won a league. He's been in the top eight nine times. He's been in the finals uh, of the of the Mega Draft multiple times. Uh, we know he has a black red deck. We saw during the the deck building or the the pool review. Uh, what's his hand look like? We know he's got some bombs there. No, yeah, simple. Dunlane Kirby and Book of Mazer pool, whatever it is, five lands, and he drew a land off the top. Next one was a Gargaroth or War Beast. So nothing quick except for Kirby. Okay, so uh, Raphael's got kind of a very potent combination here with Call of the Ring followed by uh, sort of some of the all-star of the last uh, couple rounds, Arwen the Mortal Queen, who wears the ring uh, about as well as anybody does uh, since it's indestructible. So this is going to get... It's actually going to start with a Crabane here uh, rather than the Arwen. Maybe doesn't want to show him uh, that yet. Let's see. Arwen is a capital. Oh, you said he had a. No, he has he has a great hall of the citadel. Ah. Well, uh, you have Arwen activation uh, possible on four. Yeah, that makes sense. Leave up the activation. So in comes Corbain and the token. He's just going to trade off here. Um, so Sawyer's doing his start to put to to put the pressure on. Um, to put the pressure on here, Raphael. I mean, call of the ring into Dunlin Corbain is a good start. Uh, but when you're when you're on the draw against Sawyer going Crabane into Book of Mazarbul, you're sort of uh, need need to play catch up a little bit. There's only a breaking of the fellowship on that Gargaroth coming down next turn almost for sure. So it looks like he's gonna he's gonna make use of his Rise of the Witch King here and actually uh, get his Crabane back. That's pretty sweet. Well, one one Crabane coming back is a Sam's Desperate Rescue top deck, so. That might be what's coming back for Sawyer eventually. Yeah, so he, I think he's he's identified his role is, uh, you know, Sawyer is going to be the beat down here, and he needs to to keep himself alive long enough for his his really premium cards to take over. He's going to draw this. He's drawn a Bowmasters here. It's just you know, just again, his deck is just full 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 of hits. Well, Master Call of the Ring. I mean, he's Good. facing he's facing a very large attack next turn. Um, having an indestructible Arwen is 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 pretty helpful to stand in front here. And if Arwen gets pointed at with like a non destroy effect, you can activate it and make something else indestructible. Yeah, that works as well. All right, so looting away the Hobbit Sting just because does not actually have a planes to cast it. Oh, they're getting menaced though, right? Um, he can he can end fury to kill off uh, one of the tokens here, and he'll just he can just take the six, or or he can even double block and just just lose his his token. That's safe because call of the ring does hurt you. So yeah, he's gonna stay alive here. I mean, Sawyer, I believe he did have to smite the deathless, which uh, as we discussed, I believe does actually deal with the the Arwen. So. Yeah, uh, and it's yeah, so Sawyer is one of our black red drafters. He was drafting right next to another black red drafter, Tony. I think he sort of ended up getting probably the the better version of the deck. And we know he has some bombs in there: spiteful banditry, Anduril, which is the that crazy mythic sword. But he had the Witch King uh, as well. All right, so he he doesn't he doesn't want his uh, war beast to be blocked. So he's just he's just gonna use that breaking of the fellowship, even though it's not super efficient use of it. He just wants he wants the loot. He wants the damage. He says, "I can't keep up with all this, with all this card draw. So I just need to get him dead." And he did get to loot, so pretty good. And Another he gets to replay Crabane. So Another Sam's off the top. Okay, that's a card in hand. So he's gonna he's gonna keep uh, he's gonna keep with this with this drawing cards here. He's played a generous end. So uh, if the generous end survives the next turn, that could be just a huge life boost. That could be nine life right there in the bat, and he's not going to attack with Arwen. He's going to leave it to block the ring bearer. <laughs> he got removal off the top, but it's breaking the fellowship, so it's not going to deal with the end. 
Uh, breaking the fellowship only kills uh, the bird. <laughs> Uh, might, might might just play it anyway, but might not. So the the breaking of the fellowship does allow um, a cleaner attack with the five four because it means the five seven can't can't eat it. It'll be a trade. Uh, Arwen is indestructible, isn't it? Um. Well, if oh level three, level three. If it's bad. on level three and you block, uh, the controller I believe sacrifices it. I believe. Yeah, yeah, so it that, does get through it. it so that would actually get around the indestructible, which is why I'm saying if he gets to level three, Arwen no longer becomes uh, a way to block it. You would have to block it with the the ant, and then they would trade. So I imagine, even though the breaking of the fellowship is extremely unexciting, okay, no, he's just gonna gonna get his loot. One of the four or five, I think five copies of Battle Scarred Goblin in the deck. Yeah, he had at I least was three or four. Evan and yeah, there was a few down. And I believe he had four copies of the War Beast, too, which is, I mean, it's not nothing to get excited about, but it's a solid five drop. Like, okay. So now he's going to use the Breaking of the Fellowship post combat to, to kill off the ant, I, I imagine. Looks like it. And you're at level three and you have a new Ring Bear. That's not a bad turn at all. No. And of course, Sam's Desperate Rescue gets him to level four and can get back. Any creature, probably War Beast is the best target, I imagine. Yeah, so he's he's doing just just as much ring tempting here, which is impressive considering he doesn't have a card that that tempts him every turn. He has to just cast spells to do it, but he's he's getting there. Where is Lifelink online? At some point, I imagine. I mean, he has a food token. He's not he's not desperately in need of the Lifelink yet. He has an Orcish Bowmasters that can pick off this bird, uh, prevent it from getting getting the loot. Now he's drawn Gollum. He's got Eowyn and Gothmog in hand. So he's got he's got he's got some heavy hitters here. Let's just see how he yeah. decides to deploy them. The Gollum was discarded. Yeah. Gollum got discarded. He's playing Gothmog now and he has a Bowmasters. He can kill this bird before it can even uh, he's just gonna do it now. He says, I'm going to play around a trick that he might draw. Let me do this now. Now a 2 2 that deck. What a top deck. Witch King of Angmar. Now it's a game. Wow, okay. Yeah, Witch, King of, Witch King of Angmar is uh, that's, that's a rough one here. Not sure how this is going to turn out, but definitely interesting now. Since look at these powerful cards. You got Witch King Arwen, Focus Core Master. Which King also oh, makes you sacrifice a creature if you uh, deal combat damage, right? Yep. Okay. I think one creature? Uh, yeah, think if, if you dealt combat damage, uh, the person who dealt the combat damage attacks one of, uh, sacrifices one of the creatures that dealt. And, so I you get a, and I believe you get a ring temp too, because why not? Why not with this card? Yeah, this is, again, just one of the best cards in the set up there in the top rankings. Crazy, crazy card. And also, it's also a 5-3 flyer. Yeah. You do have to discard a card if you want uh, it to get indestructible. And only a Sam's Desperate Rescue in hand, which is fairly useful. All right. So he's drawn an Inherited Envelope. He's also drawn an East Farthing Farmer, which he can only cast if he plays the envelope. But he's going to go for the... I guess he's going for... The envelope doesn't do too much. I guess it gives him access to the Farmer. He might just go for Eowyn here. So yeah, the Witch King uh, changes, changes a lot on this board, <laughs> we'll say. Of note, can attack with that. It is going to get sacrificed. There's a Frodo Baggins. So that's more ring tempting. Not that he needs it. No life link. Or no life can happen for Sawyer anytime soon. See, so the, 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 see. the thing about the Witch King is that, uh, you know, if you're getting through with a ring bear, you have to keep sacking it. But he does have Call of the Ring, so he could just give a new creature the ring every turn. The question is, what's he going to do about the 5 3 flyer? Um, Bowmaster is going to trigger when the opponent draws a card, right? So if he ever yeah. swings, he loots. If he ever does a loot for level two. 
Yeah, this time's desperate. Yeah, that's extra damage to the face. That's uh, that's extra tokens that can wear the that can wear the ring. So yeah, this uh, it was looking like Rafa was pulling ahead, but this Witch King, uh, Switch King, changed <laughs> changed that quite a bit. So saying, does I, do I want to draw a card here? And uh, he's declining to draw a card. Uh, so you can play Frodo here, which is going to give him another ring temp. It's just all the ring temps. And enough mana to uh, go up to 10 life if needed. Yeah. He also also has activation for Arwen if needed as well. Well, one or the other. But Arwen can which gain team? a lot of life too. Who the top deck is. Right, so this time he did draw a card rather than... I don't know why the first time he did uh, didn't and the second time he did, but uh, he made the decision to draw one card <laughs> when given the opportunity to draw two. Sam's this rescue just one mana get thing back into your hand because uh, he's already at level four. The top deck was a swamp, so it's fodder for her giving you Witch King indestructible. Yeah, I do think the difference in the, these boards is that Raphael obviously has a bigger board, but he has access to Life King. Um, to get him to get him out of range of you know possibly the ring or possibly this witch king attacking he has a crabane he could throw in front of the witch king even which i'm sure oh, he, like he, he which he, he he didn't make it the ring bearer for a reason right like usually crabane is like a go-to ring bearer but he said nope i'm probably gonna block with it this turn or next if the witch king attacks him r1 plus some treants in your deck is also a lot of life yeah. Arwen Arwen represents, you know, a bunch of life gains. Three three from her and then a bunch from whatever she gives the ability to as well. Yeah, so we're seeing uh we're seeing about as high power as we can get, right? Every both players are draw, getting cards, both players are high on the ring, both players are playing powerful rares and mythics. So uh this is this is what we want to see here. Yeah. Um you know, a lot of people sort of ragged on this format after a couple of weeks, you know, thinking, you know, black's too powerful, green's bad. Um, but, you know, what I've found of the, about this format is that the gameplay has been good throughout. So even though, yeah, there might have been some color imbalance uh, with the set, which caused it to be not that interesting for some people, the gameplay was still very interesting. The ring creates really interesting board states with a lot of decisions. That's like one three or is really good not usually the case yeah one threes and one fours are good like uh do you attack with your ring bear who do you put the ring on uh when do you stop attacking with it when are you okay trading off like just so a lot of decisions um and you know we're seeing that in this game like this game sort of like a microcosm of kind of all the best things about this format oh I, yeah i just realized your death if if your ring bear attacks uh the bowmaster is going to make a one with death touch because of I'm not going to feel sure will you know all right so getting back to Corbain here putting the putting the ring on the witch king which means uh, has to block it because even with the food it won't uh, it won't be good enough okay does that matter it's Mike the death list yeah that 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 does matter uh, does R one back up but, oh no! Sorry, it takes away indestructible. Yes, okay. swipe, yes, swipe the deathless. It it is an answer to Arwen as well as an answer to Witch King, which I believe is the spirit, the <laughs> um, the flavor, the flavor of the card is that that's how they killed the Witch King. Imagine that Witch King attacking gives you smite the deathless. But um, he's at eight life, not five. So. Uh, so he has to use uh, has to use the Arwin here. Actually, can't can't sack the food. Yeah. Oh no, the Arwin uh, doesn't why, work either. Why? Why can't he sack the food? Well, he's gonna go to eight, and then he's oh, gonna take four. eight. Level four, jeez. He's taking eight. Tactic, yeah. So smite the deathless got got around everything. Um, so. His other option, oh. which would have also had him die, would it would be to give the try to give the Kerbane indestructible, but the Smite the Deathless gets around that. So 
Smite the Deathless um, coming coming out on on the loot on the loot there. Um, you know, he wisely decided to put the put the ring on the Witch King and said, "If I draw a removal, or if I draw something, I could maybe win this turn." Um, you know, a lot of players there just decide not to attack. Right? A lot of players just say, "Well, my opponent has a bigger board than me. I'm at a low life total. I don't have life gain. They have a food token." But he said, "I'm gonna die if I don't if I don't draw something here." You just got to level four on the ring because of the sack uh, the sack trigger on the Witch King. There was a sound of desperate rescue if you wanted to get to level four anyway. So. Yeah, but I mean, the Witch King into light. That is that is what you know. That's called you you play to your outs, right? He's he's in a he's in a mess of trouble next turn. There's a lot of life gain going on on Raphael's side between the food token and potential Arwen activation. Yeah. Attack with the Witch King, and he found the Smite the Deathless, which which allowed him to just, just kind of snipe that win away. When maybe you know a lot of other players may have just passed the turn or proceeded a bit differently with with their decisions. Yes, and you know that's why he's a nine-time top eighter. That's why he's won a league. That's why he's come close to winning many leagues, and he's so consistent because in those spots where a lot of other players play it safe or don't know exactly what to do. He says, I know I'm dead otherwise, so let me make this attack and draws the right card at the right time. And uh, we push through. Uh, Raphael did not do much of any sideboarding. And did Sawyer uh, make any changes there? Um, I didn't see too many. I should have been paying more attention. I was reminiscing on what just happened. <laughs> So uh, we've got the Frodo into Arwen uh, start here. Raphael, pretty dangerous. Yeah, we, saw, we, oh. we, saw, we saw Sawyer take a mulligan. Uh, what's his hand looking like? Yeah, three, the keep afterwards is three mountains, Gothmog and a war beast, and a battle scarred goblin. Um, there is a smite the deathless in hand now, just top deck again for the second time in like two turns to save the day a little. Is he going to just get rid of Frodo right now, or is he going to wait and see? Let's... Uh, that card Goblin could be played. It looks like he's going to wait till Arwen hits the stack, I imagine. Uh, I think he's going to target the Arwen. So he's he's saying, um, does he have a Smite the Deathless? I think Raphael's thinking, you know, uh, I think Raphael did, did get a look at Sawyer's uh, deck when he was playing around one, and I think he saw yeah. a lot of two drops, and he said, if he's not playing a two drop, probably means... Yeah, yeah. You're, Probably he's you're going right. to have a smite the deathless. So he, there was a pause. Like, a lot of players would just untap and throw our, our one on the battlefield. Like, there was a visible pause. He was like, yeah, he was about to definitely. decide if he wanted to go into combat or not. And he said, look, I'm playing the R1. I want the loot. Um, yeah. I think definitely a better target there. I should have said it when it hits the stack. But clearly it's better hit R1, especially when you have the counter to indestructible. Yeah, he's got an old man Willow here to keep keep the ring ticking. Then he's got a land revolt to, uh, to 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 throw the old man willow up in the air next turn when Frodo attacks. Level three. So um, she loves that. Is uh, is in hand now. Does Sawyer have another removal here? For <laughs> no removal. He got she loves ambush though. It could act as removal for the big guy. Got the, um, and he, the thing is, is that the old man willow can gain flying from land revolt. So Landreval can come down next turn. Frodo attacks unblockable because of the ring. And because of the triggered ability on Landreval, you get flying to Old Man Willow. So that'll be basically, that'll be nine chance. damage if that all works out. Well, there's a decent chance Gothamog is just going to be the play here, though. Death Toucher. Okay. Yeah, if he wants right. to use all his mind, it has to be Gothamog. Okay. Or more than one, I should say, because Haunt, Haunt is the other play. Onto the dread market. Right, so that'll change the Frodo uh, math here. It's level four, though. How badly do you need a Frodo? It has to be blocked to Fable. Yeah, it has to be blocked. Yeah, it has to be blocked. Then you have another ring bearer. Is it worth it? I mean, if he wa if he really wanted. Okay, he's going to put the ring on the Landreval, actually. Interesting. Okay. And then next turn attack. he's going to set up an attack for eight in the air or oh, plus. Wait, wait, wait. Um, 
Oh, that's weird. But because there's a trigger on Old Man Willow too, which means you could kill the Death Touch and then everything's dead except. Yeah, Mandela. but what, what, what do you want to sack, right? Like, you don't want to sack either of your creatures here. Well, oh, Frodo, and then the opponent's board is empty. You just have a Land Revolve at level four and you hope no one will. I think he's just going to set up for the for the attack for eight in the air next turn. Eight plus, plus three from the ring. Seems okay. Oh Sorry. my god, guy top decks. And Daryl off the top. Okay. It's a game. Yeah, Anderil could change things here. We'll see. Yeah, those yeah, those little one one tokens. You know, if 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 Raphael's plan is to, to win with flying here with Landerval and the big willow, uh, little one one tokens are gonna interrupt that that plan. So it's gonna be Anderil and either Haunt or she loves ambush held up. Is, uh, is what it seems. Uh, there's nothing going on because War Beast is five mana. There's yep. nothing going on. Uh, so it doesn't have a fifth line, right? Nope. So what's this attack all about then? <laughs> it's the She Loves Ambush, I guess? She Loves and Chill. Okay. Oh, um, oh that, that's a weird interaction. Battle Scarred Goblin. If you did it pre combat, it comes off the thing with that touch. Um,. But you could do it in response yeah. to the trigger, actually. Is there going to be a trigger? Yeah, it's a, it's a triggered ability, right? It'll go on the stack. Oh, yeah, okay. When it becomes blocked, then it'll go on the stack, and then you could do it. I've, I've actually not seen that before. I've seen Bowmasters yeah. with Shalab Zambush. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> uh, kill off something. All right, here comes here comes the sword. All right, so we got a Hobbit Sting here, so a bit of interaction. That's very handy for what's going on here. So Frodo actually doesn't. Oh, Frodo actually doesn't have to be blocked here. It's, it only it only must be blocked if you're the ring bearer. So I'm not sure if he clocked that. That um, the one one doesn't have to chump the Frodo, or does it? I, get it. I don't think so. Um, I thought it was if Frodo's your ring bearer must be blocked, but yeah, maybe he just did Hobbit? it to save the damage because he's getting pretty low here. All right, so he's got a Hobbit sting and a slip on the ring here to disrupt. Potentially disrupt whatever Sawyer is trying to do. If he loves ambush, though, two more HP means it'll survive. Yeah, usually. So okay, he's gonna let this happen. Hobbit Sting uh, could could have killed it, but then he could have just re-equipped. So these things come and tap and attacking. Uh, if the equip creature is a legend, then they will come attacking. Yes. Interesting. Right, so it's, it's attacking with both here. Leaving the 1-1 one, one death touch back. What's happening here? Sawyer's at 10 because she loves plus crack food. Is it safe? He's going to go for the sting on the goblin. If you save it with she loves and then... You, the opponent knows you got 10 life. Does that matter? I think it's still game. I think you, I think you save your creature. Is, no. is there a creature? No, he, wa oh. he wants to go for the surprise life gain here. Um, okay. The the thing is, is that if Raphael draws a land, he'll have an Eagles of the North, which will uh, which will actually get around that. If he draws a creature, he could sack. Does that matter? He can sack to kill the Death Touch before... I guess he doesn't. He, uh, uh, that that is true as well, but he actually should just cast his Eagles of the North here. Um, Eagles of the North means that he has eleven flying. Uh, yeah, which gets around the Shalab's ambush because he's he's just gonna die to these uh, <laughs> to these flyers next turn if he doesn't attack. No, he's not attacking here. Oh. Did he um, not? Oh, because well, it didn't matter because of the ring, right? What ring? Well, the Landreval was was the ring bearer at four, so it was twelve anyway. Yeah, it's twelve. Of course. It's so he didn't he didn't need to show him the the ambush. Yeah, he didn't so have nearly we, enough. We we forgot momentarily about the ring, just adding an extra three. So it was twelve, and he could only get up to ten. So we're we're gonna. So he looks like he's boarding in shower, 
of arrows, which destroys a an enchantment, a creature with flying, and most importantly, after that game, an artifact. What, what was stopping the trump lock there with the death with the one? Well, they both had flying. Oh, it's two. Other, it's not two other creatures. It's just two two creatures. Okay, never mind. Yeah, so Landerval. yes, Landerval, it reads a bit strange in comparison to other cards we've seen in the past. It says whenever two or more other creatures attack a player, one of those creatures gains flying. So Landerval doesn't have to be the one attacking. Yeah, it was a flying uh, flying old tree. Or whatever. So like the, the ability basically has haste. Like if you, if you play it right away and attack with two other creatures, one of them gains yeah. flying. If you attack with it and something else, the other thing gains flying. Uh, so it was it was nine flying plus the three from the ring. Uh, excuse, ex excuse us for overseeing that. We've been uh, we've been um, at this we've been at this all day. <laughs> I think he had the swing out and didn't, but he did not have to swing. Yeah, well, we were doing the math that the Shalob's ambush would give him just enough life, but mm -hmm. uh, the ring. So it looks like he wants two shower of arrows. He says that card's a little too scary. Um, let me just have answers for that, and maybe it, there's not that much else it'll kill in the in the meantime. It's a bit narrow, but uh, he says, "Look, I have, yeah. I, the 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 thing about uh, boarding in narrow cards is what is this? Oh shoot! What is that? This is a pretty important match. We have to remake." He says. Oh, he may 59. have he may have submitted fifty nine cards here. Yeah. Uh oh. Yeah, um, <laughs> quite a good hand here, but it's a mulligan because there's a zero lander first. Yeah, so I don't just, think so. Yeah, Raphael had a nice hand, but it doesn't matter. Um, but what I was going to say about boarding in the two shower of arrows, you say, well, okay, it's just for one card, really. Like, he didn't, I mean, he saw Book of Mazar, but I guess he would pick that off before it got to levels two and three. But um, with all the ring, with all the ring bearer, uh, ring tempting he has, he could loot those away. Controversy here on game three of the finals. Uh, um, I think Raphael's so just gonna, he's, he's just gonna let Sawyer send the challenge. <laughs> uh, game one proving to be ever important, the Witch King top deck into Smite, just getting, getting there for Sawyer. Yeah, that, that was a, that was a close one, and then this, this one was close too, right? That, that, that sword came down and it, it made basically Raphael have to win, like, basically on the spot, which luckily he did have enough damage. Yep, so it's for all the marbles for a lot of they're going to concede. Well, Sawyer's going to concede this. Sawyer's going to concede the second one. They're going to get to sideboard. So sorry for the little delay here. He just, he was clicking cards and he clicked one too few. I'm going to see what Sawyer uh, changes around this time. So Sawyer should be the one conceding this game, right? Uh, we're in game three now. Sideboarding for game three. Yeah, Sawyer conceded the second game, right? I wasn't paying attention. I hope they they know what they're doing. It should be Sawyer on the play if he wishes. Yeah, I'm not sure that's how it ended up, but uh, we'll be fine. <laughs> I hope that's. He made zero changes. I don't. I think he made changes uh, going into game two and didn't change. Didn't. I know. I know. Unchanged. Raphael wanted wanted to board in his uh, his basically the. The sorcery speed broken wings that uh, that scries one shower of arrows. And like I was saying, a narrow card, especially if you only see one target for it, but he has so much ring ring tempting. Okay. But hopefully they did this the right way here. It's Sawyer, not Sawyer Lendo. should be on the play. Well, I guess... Uh, put me on the play, he said, yeah. Oh, uh, okay. So draw first. So he needs to say <laughs> draw first. This is the first match of the entire league where this... Uh, Thing happened a bit. It's a bit of a comedy of errors, but they got there. Um, all right, so uh, wow, we got the we got the same start as last game here for. Uh, well, was, for wait, Pina. we have an Andrew. This is going to be a haymaker game. We got we, we, Not only do we have Frodo into Arwen, but we have we have Bowmasters too in here. We got. Oh we, yeah, well we have the King of Angmar. We got the full suite of bombs here, so let's. Well, see. we have fellowship and. Haradrim Spearmaster. This is going to be... Uh, oh, so he's not <laughs> playing... Fro okay, so he's going for Bowmasters before Frodo. Uh, he might have just... I think he's highlighting that he might have mistakenly played the planes rather than the 
the great because he cycled for the planes and sort of just dragged the planes right into play. But he yeah. does get to play. I think maybe he would have preferred to play Frodo, but <laughs> you know what? He'll settle for a Bill Masters, right? Yeah, she loves ambush with the top deck though. Very relevant. I mean it doesn't um, it doesn't like stop anything Raphael's doing, it just keeps his creature alive. Like Raphael still gets his Bill Masters, he still gets his little one one. Few options though. You can develop Spear Master or Andril, but uh, there's also breaking the fellowship which the Bill Masters can do itself in. <laughs> yeah, this uh, yeah, this might be worth casting this might be worth Casting ambush and then breaking the fellowship. Um, yeah. but he might. He might also just because the, the the sword is only as good as you know if you have creatures to bear it. But he does have the one one now, so he can. Okay, he's going for spear master. So Raph, Raphael play. has drawn the shower of arrows. He does not have a forest with which to cast it yet. Oh my lord! Because Andrel is coming down. So I mean, it will come down eventually, and he has the answer for it. Yeah, he does need a forest pretty bad. Um, he will have loots to find it, but, uh, you know, that card will kill you very fast, so. Even one trigger, you get the birds. Yeah. Oh, those spirits. All right, so we are getting, uh, again, like, like like the other game, we are just getting haymakers here. This is... Uh, this is pretty much all. This is pretty much almost more than we could have asked for for finals from a set where people sort of were down on it. So now he's representing and, uh, his uh, Shalab's ambush here with this attack. But uh, it also wasn't meant to be because they remade. But that's Raph's fault. <laughs> yeah, Raphael had a nice looking hand uh, for the the game that was not to be, but it, it was not a uh, Frodo into Arwen hand. So now he's pointing out his shower of arrows without having a way to kill it. But he can he has he has generous ents and forests. So he can play as Arwen and then uh, begin to loot at, at the very least. Does he have something to deal with Witch King at all? In his deck? Uh, I don't believe so. <laughs> Powerful cards. I know Miranda had two copies of Banish from Edoras, but I don't think he picked up any. Well, our one cannot be killed with breaking, so guessing bow masters will be the target of breaking. I don't. I don't think our. I think the. I think this game is just at this point. It's solely about sword. Like Frodo is great, but the sword wins way faster than Frodo. Like Frodo is card advantage. Um, the sword is just output of damage. Just the output of damage is just insane. But the fact that the fact that it makes you like equipments. You know, sometimes you say, "Well, equipments are good." But if your opponent kills your creatures, you don't have stuff to put it on. But here it, it builds in, it gives you things to put it on. It's just, it's oppressive you know, in that way. Moment, it's a life link counter on an end. It's just like a classic, very classic, supremely unpleasant card to, to, be, to have to play against. <laughs> like there's just very little, there's just very little wiggle room that you have in the early game against something like this sword. It just comes down, it asks nothing of you. The block. He says, he says uh, at the very least, I can make you re-equip. Re but we know Sawyer has the uh, Shalab's Ambush if he wants to fight over this. In the end of the day, Shalab's Ambush is saving. Uh, I mean, he's, he's just going to trade it for the Bowmasters and the token and be okay with it. And then just re-equip to a token. Like, it's just... That's just... Uh, oh. Okay, so... Oh, he's drawn his forest here, so oh we now... Oh my god, it's the game. We now have uh, yet yet another <laughs> wrinkle in this plan here, which is yeah. him to destroy this. Like I said, the looting, you know, the looting got him there one turn sooner. Okay, here we go. Generous Ent, Generous Ent has reach. Which King of Angmar is the last big threat here in hand? Does, does, uh, he, have a, does he have a land to cast it? Uh, nope. But does Raphael have an Ent? Raphael, Raphael, Raphael has a Torment of Golem that he could cast next turn. Oh, that that's just an answer to which. That's <laughs> yeah, we are. We are just swinging haymakers here. Uh, let's see who decides to discard either the Eowyn or the Golem, probably. Okay, Ents Fury he decides. He says, well, these are all 1-1s. One I don't care about any of them. 
Yeah, so he's going to activate the Arwen here to uh, make sure his Frodo doesn't die. A two three. What a scam. Do we get do do we get a Witch King this turn? We get a Witch King this turn. Uh, one turn. Yeah, he just yeah. Raphael needed him to miss on that land so he could grab it with the Torment of Gollum. Now it looks like we get another, you know, just completely ridiculous card for him to have to deal with. Does Raphael have a sixth land in hand? Um, not a sixth land. No. I was gonna say Ent is an answer. <laughs> no, he doesn't have a generous end right now. Yeah, I know. I was, I was predicting the top deck because yep. everything's going crazy. He was a turn away from getting rid of Witch King. You're telling me? I, th I thought people said this was a low-powered set. <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 this it's match is uh, this match is this match is basically on you know if you're looking at like what's the most powerful board states and things you could do in this format. Uh, I think this is like a ten on ten this match, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we're we're glad to see it here for the finals. The sad thing is, uh, I mean, for Rap, he was a turn away from actually dealing with this Witch King if if you mm -hmm. missed that one land drop. I'm sorry, I missed this one land drop. Yeah, Torment of Gollum, one turn mm -hmm. too late here. This looks like Frodo's yeah, gonna yeah. Frodo's gonna be sacrificed here, or or not. Or not. Okay, so in this case, he blocks and it doesn't trigger the, the Witch King. So if, if he lets Frodo in, Frodo actually gets sacrificed, right? Yeah, do you think, uh, do you hmm. think Sawyer forgot about that? Because he gets a ring temp also, which is... Yeah. I am, I mean, he, do, I mean, I wouldn't, I would not say that he missed, that he missed it. But uh, I believe Ooh. that if he lets the Frodo through, it just gets sacrificed. And I don't know. And I assume Raphael knows that because he, he had he had Witch King in his deck. I think from from basically the start of the league. Uh, Raph, um, Raph knew the full hand, but five drop with five mana out. War Beast. Here's a good, yeah. War Beast of Gargaroth is a good one. Uh, he's got a Rise of the Witch King, but unfortunately, uh, Sawyer has you know some stuff that he doesn't mind sacrificing. So in his hand, in Raphael's hand, he has Eowyn. He has a Golem. Is a rise of the witch king, uh, but the witch king has already risen. It seems. <laughs> this is a, that was an important uh, Gargaroth, or, or actually, I guess since you can never hit face without having the sack of creature, not as important. But um, oh. just no answer for witch king, except for a huge life linking triant. Yeah. You don't get lifelink though. You can R one in deck. We do know that. So so normally normally you see like you know you, see, you we, we've seen cards like this like these big flyers that can potentially gain indestructible uh, until end of turn. So really hard to deal with. So how do you beat it? Well, you race it. Well, because it makes you sack something every time you deal damage to the opponent. It's impossible to race it because you're just losing creatures when you when you swing back at them. Like it's <laughs> it's kind of it's kind of wild in that way. So looks like he may go for the. Hmm, let's see. He may go for the sack golem to the rise of the witch king, but like I said, the witch king has uh, risen already. <coughs> Is there a fourth mana for that? Yeah, he, he has another land here. Maybe he just feels. Maybe he he has enough fodder to maybe just keep keep getting in with a ring bearer every turn even if he has to sack it i mean it's not a great plan but if he can get the ring to four that means he gets so he sacks the golem here he gets the ring to four he brings back the the eagles which is a, a flying blocker of that least <laughs> he's gonna sack the golem which will get him to four so he's going to get to Ring Tempt. He's going to lose his Ring Tempt because of the Witch King ability. But then he gets to play Eowyn and Ring Tempt again. Maybe he figures I can race by even just producing one one Ring Tempt to return and getting in. By the, way, by the way, Flavor, Rise of the Witch King. And the Witch King's the problem on the field right now. I know. That's what I was saying. <laughs> the Witch King has uh, arisen already. And it's... Uh, yeah. All right. Oh, he's bringing back Bowmasters. Interesting. Oh, it's King's off the thingy. Okay, I, I was I thought he was gonna bring back Eagles, perhaps.
Uh, you attack him, it does, it does six damage. You do have to sack your thing. Yeah, he does have an EO in to cast next turn. And eventually he can cash in his lifelink creatures for, for life if uh, if the race... If it looks like it's going to be a race and it's not going his way, he can cash in his lifelink cr uh, creatures. Just attack with them one turn. Yeah, this is... Uh, this is like a best of greatest hits of this format, right? Like, this is like... This is everything we dreamed that this format was going to be and then it ended up being... Not exactly that in 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 most of the cases, but we are we are getting just we are just getting a, a dream scenario here for this finals. Just guys have haymakers trading back and forth. Two great players. I'm just happy Raph sleep at 49. Um, so <laughs> Witch Kings, uh, it's only level one, so there's no looting, aka Bowmaster pinging. <laughs> no, not yet. Right now. Oh, improvised club. No, he does have improvised. the. Okay, Improvised Club is interesting. And he does have the Breaking of the Fellowship to get to the next level if he wants it. Um, let, let's see how this, this works out. That so, would trigger Master if it's not the end of the world. The only creature that will die to the the Breaking of the Fellowship is the Bowmasters, but it, it will cause Raphael to gain life, actually. That's true. Bowmasters is gone if Fellowship is used. So also then, there's also of note, you need a card in hand in order to keep Witch King safe. I mean, I don't think he's as concerned about that. He didn't see an, a, enough removal from Raphael to really be concerned. I mean, he already saw that he used his uh, destroy a creature with flying or artifact or enchantment. He used it already. So I don't know if he's as concerned about keeping a card in hand, but I'm sure he's, you know, he'll keep it in mind. Yeah, in comes the Witch King. 16 because of the life making. And so is effectively at 12 because of the the spider food. Yep. All right. So in comes, uh, so, right. So Raphael looted away an EO in, uh, which would have given him a ring, uh, a ring time trigger, but he did, but the card that he drew that he, he discarded it for was a Nazgul. He's also drawn an Aaron Rider oh. of Gondor, which is a, just a you know, little draw card. It's pretty good. We like that. We like drawing cards, I think. <laughs> So yeah, this is uh, this is just about as close as it's going to be. Like I said, these big bombs, haymakers on each side. The sword got dealt with. The sword was potentially going to run away with the game. All right, he's drawn another ring tapped card and in inherited envelope. Mm -hmm. So now he's going to play his Nazgul and give something the ring, and then he'll be able to attack in. Which I believe is his plan here. Can give up now? Isn't it just a lifelinker? It's just basically a 3 3 lifelink. Maybe you make yeah, Arwen the. Yeah, you can make Arwen the ring bearer. It'll gain you three. It'll deal the opponent six. Like, that Whoa. sounds pretty good. I mean, we do know he has an improvised club, which he's probably going to cast, if I had to guess. Yeah, you can get rid of the food or the. Four beasts, neither are particularly uh Okay, so he's going to choose to get his golem back and play it rather than cast a card from hand to, to ring tempt. I'm not sure. Maybe just to have more things to potentially loot away, but he drew an inherited envelope that he most certainly probably doesn't need. Hmm. Interesting way to get your ring temp, because he has two ring temp cards in hand. Oh, but he spent... Oh, he spent... No, he's has he has three mana. Okay. <laughs> Goodbye. Okay, he's gonna get Gollum rather than he's he's gonna go with the known information rather than rather than show one of the cards in hand right now. Interesting why that was the the path, but huh. the club club is getting to kill Frodo using the the three life food. Look what he's looking what he's doing. Yeah. It's, it's a yeah. life linker too. Yeah, so, so this denies him the ring temp this turn. Uh, the Nazgul would have been safer here. So now, now things change, right? Because now the R win can die and he won't gain he won't get the lifelink. So 
This one's going to come down to it. Uh, what's what's Sawyer's draw for the turn here? It's a swap. Uh, okay. So full info outside of that. So I imagine he's going to kill off the Arwen. Huh. All right. Is um is it is an ant off the top like exactly what he needs and that's all? Possibly. I mean, I just I I think that was a little bit of a, a strange line to use the golem to try and temper the ring when he had Nazgul in hand. Not sure what the like. He could have just played Nazgul. He would have had more creatures on board. Like he had to sack the Aaron Rider to do that. Curious. That that, that was that was a curious one. Um, I would like if it's me. I'd probably just just throw out Nazgul to play. Like, why not? We're thinking about here two, three turn clock basically. You might be wondering what to make the ring there because there is a bowmaster trigger when you loot. Yeah, I mean he can remove both of the life links here. So like he's re he's already removed the Frodo and he can remove the the Arwen cleanly now. It's a I game where Andoril dealt with. Yeah, but Witch King is. Uh, I mean Andoril is obviously just like it's a colorless bomb, but Witch King just also just creates an impossible board state here. Yeah, I think he's making this the ring bearer just so that there's no <laughs> bowmaster trigger. Yep. Yeah. Alright, so he's drawn Call of the Ring here, not particularly useful. He's drawn Nazgul to get the ring. He could put it on Frodo and that'll be six. That's not so bad. It's, it's, it's going to be close here. He's going to sack Frodo, but it's going to give back the ring. So, because Frodo's going to die. So, I think, oh, uh, I know why he got back the Frodo now. Or why he got back the, um, he got back the Golem because if it gets sacrificed, it keeps the ring going. My God. So now, because I was wondering why in the world, out of all the options, he could have played Nazgul, done the other thing. But he said, well, at least I know that I get another ring bearer. If Gollum comes into play and he gets killed. So he did get he did get his attack taken away last turn because of because of what he did. But now he gets to at least benefit uh, somewhat from it. Wait, this is like the whole game here. There's a ring temp getting into level four. If he puts on Witch King, it's over. Isn't it? Witch King would be basically... Eight. An eight power thing, but if he has interaction, it's not great. Yeah, but he says, well, he could have a blocker, he could have a Corbain, he could have something. It also triggers Orcish Bowmasters, of which King was the uh, was the looter. Exactly. Every All life counts here. So he has a, a land. Is that what you said? If he goes to one health, he can't use Call of the Ring. Oh, no, he can't use it to draw, but he can. He can make no, something. Uh, it looks like Ra it looks like Raphael has this from what from what we can tell. Okay, well, so he, the, well the, 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 there's a loot here. The the, the loot. He can just put the bowmasters. He can just put the bowmasters in front here. It's it's over. Call of the Ring um, would still tempt, right? So. Yeah, even yeah, even if he loses his ring bearer. Ooh, all right, we got a we got a league winner here. We got two leagues in a row. We got our future draft. We made it all the way. We got Raphael with his Abzan Legends deck taken down his first league win. So con big congratulations to Raphael, and uh, we'll be seeing we'll be seeing you back hopefully next week. We got a we got our rookie of the year uh, cube draft coming up. So uh, stay tuned for that. And once again, congratulations to Raphael. His first league win, Lord of the Rings.